What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and I am crazy excited to be doing this review for two reasons. Uh, one, I'll just go ahead and tell you, from a cost per watt hour power station, bang for the buck, this right here, the Bybean CN505 is it. This is the best bang for the buck power station on the market and I think it's quite incredible. The other thing I'm excited about is it's currently halftime and the Razorbacks are currently destroying Texas A&M 17 to three. So I am going to make this a quick review so that I can get back in and watch the game. I'm not gonna lie to you, very excited about this for, for both of them. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by the Moore Expo, the Midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts. Artemis Overland Hardware, they have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And Long Creek Overland, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. So yeah, this is the Bybean CN505. It is a 615 watt hour power station with a 500 watt inverter with a thousand watt peak. Now I could show you all kinds of things being plugged into it, hair dryers, uh, blenders, uh, electric skillets, you know, all those sort of things. And the bottom line is, if it doesn't go above 500 or sustain above 500 for very long, it's going to run it just fine. So all your all your camp stuff, if you you know take a blender, maybe a small coffee pot, um, anything electric, all your your camera batteries, drone batteries, lights, um, it'll power those no problem. Uh, heated blanket, like we've got a USB powered electric blanket for when it's really cold. Uh, It'll power that no problem. Your fridge, power that no problem, and I'll get into all those details. It does have a 100 watt MPPT controller, so it can take up to 100 watts of input, and that's be a power brick, solar, 12 volt, that sort of thing. Um, it is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which means it will last you up to 2,000 cycles. And that's not 2,000 cycles till it's dead, that's 2,000 cycles to 80% capacity. And then it can just keep on going, but it'll be at 80%. So this thing is going to last you a very long time. It does have what I think is a very good display. It shows input and output wattage. It has a nice uh, clear display that shows the battery percentage and the time left if you're powering things off of it the time left for it to be zero, or if you're charging it, the time left for it to be fully recharged. It is a smallish display, but it is actually quite clear and actually easy to see in the sun. So what you've got here, two AC outputs, like I said, rated at 500 watts. It is a pure sign inverter in there. You have one 12 volt DC output that has a nice little rubberized cover. You've got two 5.5 millimeter DC outputs here, and then you have a total of five USB ports. One USB-C that is a PD60, so running things like a MacBook Pro or other high-end laptop, charging off of that won't be a problem. You've got four USB-A ports, two quick charge ports, two standard, um, two standard USB ports. Um, so it's, it's actually got quite a few USB ports compared to the competition for this price. Uh, and then the input, it is, uh, fairly rectangular. Um, it is nice and small. It does have a pretty nice diffused light on the back. You know how I feel about flashlights on these things to begin with. But I mean, if you're going to have one, this is actually pretty decent. It has a very low, it has a pretty decent medium and a pretty darn bright high on the back of it. And then there's fan access, but I actually like this form factor. It's small. It tucks away in, in tight places. Uh, I like it. The body here is aluminum and, and feels nice and sturdy, plastic on each end. And I actually like this form factor. I'm not so sure about this. It looks like an old suitcase handle. Um, I wish there was something a little more solid, maybe that folds down into it or something here. Um, but I mean, it works. I mean, it, it's a good handle, but it's not flat for you to stack things up on top of it nice and neat. As with most power stations today, this does have pass-through charging, so you can be charging this and using it at the same time, which I think is just, that should be standard for, for any power station today in, in 2021. With this, they actually give you this very nice case for all your cords. And what is included in this is obviously your power brick. You've got your MC4 adapter, 
to plug into just about any solar panel on the market. And then you've got a, a decent length a 12 volt cord to go into your uh, vehicle's 12 volt outlet, cigarette lighter port, that sort of thing. Um, so, and all in this very nice case to keep everything nice and neat. Definitely love that. I don't know why other companies don't give you nice cases like this to manage the cords. I mean, for most of them, at best, you get some cheesy little bag and at worst, you get absolutely nothing, which is the case with a lot of them. Well, let's talk about the performance of this little guy when it comes to powering a fridge, because for our purposes, overlanding, camping for the weekend, um, you know, if you're a van lifer or car camper, that sort of thing, a lot of times we're going to be buying these to run our fridge that way you know, overnight, we're not running our starter battery down. And we want to know just how long this thing's going to last. This thing did crazy good. It's a 615 watt hour battery and it lasted running our Dometic CFX 355IM, which is the fridge we test every single power station on. It's set at 34 degrees. There's two water bottles in it, two two liter water bottles in it, just to kind of help regulate the temperature. It's inside the house where we keep it at about 74 degrees. So everything is even this thing ran the dometic for 60 hours and three seconds that uh, there's no other power station in this range that has done that well it is crazy impressive how long this little guy ran our fridge so big thumbs up to that now the power station that you're going to see this being compared the most to is going to be this it is the Blue Eddy EB70. Now, if you have watched my channel, you know how much I love the Blue Eddy EB70. It's not perfect, but it can do so much. It's got the wireless charging, it's got more AC outputs, it's got more of everything, and it's 715 watt hours. This one did beat the Bybean. 60 hours, three seconds. This one, 60 hours, 13 seconds. And it's 100 watt hours more powerful than this and it only beat it by 10 seconds so if that doesn't speak highly of what the buy bean will do i don't know what will now the big question is how much does this thing cost compared to this and is it worth it at the time of this video is being made this thing can be had on amazon there's an 80 dollar coupon that you can apply but you can buy this for 385 dollars which is to me insane typically i mean a decent buy is under a dollar a watt hour the blue eddy b70 was i think the best bang for the buck at 70 cents per watt hour which is fantastic but this one you get for 62 cents per watt hour there is not another power station, not even in the 300 watt range, there's not another power station that can top the buy bean for price per watt hour. And I think it is absolutely fantastic. Now, which one should you buy? Um, that's gonna depend on your needs. This obviously can do more. It can charge faster, 100 watts of input, 200 watts of input. So you're gonna be able to charge this one twice as fast as you can this. Um, it, it, it just does more. Now you can see from a, a, a form factor perspective, those are nice and square, but the buy bean definitely comes in as, as the winner in the size category. So which one should you get? Well, that's just going to depend on which one, uh, what you need from it. This one has a 700 watt inverter, 500 watt inverter, um, a lot more charging ports, two USB-Cs, but still it's only a total of four USB, where this one has five USB. Um, so which one should you buy? I'm gonna leave that up to you based on your needs. But um, I mean, if you're just really on a budget, I think this is hands down a winner and a no-brainer. And it is definitely gets my recommendation for best bang for the buck power station that I have tested so far. And I think it's quite incredible. Let me do say one thing that I want to be clear about with the 12 volt outlet for running a fridge. It's not regulated, which means as the battery goes down, the voltage does drop. Now, usually with the lithium iron phosphate battery, that's not an issue. The voltage doesn't drop very much at all. 
And if you set your fridge on the low setting for the voltage cutoff, it will not have a problem. Um, if you set it on medium or high, this thing will trigger the low voltage cutoff on your fridge. So if you're gonna buy this and you're gonna run a fridge off of it, just be sure to set your fridge to the lowest voltage cutoff setting and you won't have an issue. Let's talk charging times because the one thing that I wish this had more than anything is faster recharging. It comes with a 100 watt rated power brick and yeah, I mean, even at that, you're getting 88 watts, which through an MPPT controller, it's, that's, that's not bad. But at 88 watts, 615 watt hour battery, you're talking seven to eight hours recharge time from zero. Now at this price point, I can't complain too much, but it, it would be nicer if, you know, plugged into a wall, you got more than 88 watts. Plugged into the Jeep, understand plugged in the solar understand but from the wall outlet i wish it could get more than 88 watts of input from a solar charging perspective i am using a third party 120 watt panel from elicenta i think is how it's pronounced not for sure it's 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 a good one from amazon and currently getting 83 watts into the by bean which uh it's pretty good. I mean, considering that this accepts 100 watts max, getting 83 watts out of a 120 watt panel. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a hazy day today, but uh, I'd say that's pretty good performance. Not bad at all. From a 12 volt DC charging perspective, from your accessory outlet or cigarette outlet in your vehicle, um, I'm getting 88 watts, which is pretty good. And the one thing I do like is it is consistent across the board. So whether it's wall outlet, DC, uh, solar, I mean, you're 88 watts. We saw 84 watts on the solar. Um, I mean, at least you know that it's, it's consistent across the board and, and know what to expect. So, I mean, 88 watts on the, on the 12 volt, that's pretty good. So I know this was pretty quick, but I hope that this has been helpful. The Bybean CN505 is a fantastic power station and definitely hands down the best bang for the buck. Um, if you would, you know, give us that YouTube love, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, check out longcreekoverland.com for, for merchandise. We've got some new stuff. We've got this one, um, We Can Go Anywhere, which is a, a song that uh, I put in a lot of my videos. We have another shirt that's kind of paired up this one that says, where do we go from here? It's got my wife's Grand Cherokee on it. And then we've got a new Topo Gladiator of Sully um, on another new shirt. So check that out and check out our Patreon if you want to consider supporting this channel in a very tangible way and gain access to all of our GPS data, all of our routes and tracks and waypoints and stuff from all of our trips. And we've got a lot of great stuff still to come. So um, definitely subscribe and hit that bell, that little notification icon so you get notified with that. But thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye.